Chapter 71 It wasn't her fault you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 71 It wasn't her fault, Engagement Xian Ziheo looked down at Chui Lucien he was in Beijing a few days ago. Even though his subordinates had accepted the invitation in his place, he was too busy to notice it. With a slight suspicion in his eyes, he stared at Jiang Rulin's disappearing figure. Even though we are not friends with the Ling family's daughter, but our family still familiar with each other in the business world. I had received the invitation on behalf of our family, so you must participate it too. Chui Lucien approached Xian Ziheo with a face full of dependence, her watery eyes glistening with hope. I heard that Vice President Han will be promoted and I also heard that your relationship with him are not good. I heard that he had set up an anti-corruption unit in Ling Company to investigate all the major and minor issues within the company. Anti-corruption Xian Ziheo laughed coldly, you're talking about Han Shuegang. Xian Ziheo pulled his arm away from Chui Liuxian's grip and looked at the watch on his wrist. He then took his coat and walked to the door without looking back. Eh. Ziheo. Chui Lucien looking at him in astonishment. This weekend is the mid-autumn festival. Grandpa said you haven't visited him for a while. Will you come with me too? Xian Ziheo didn't stop, nor he responds to her question. In the blink of an eye, he was gone. Chui Lucien looked at the door, which no longer showed Xian Ziheo's figure, in disbelief. Her slender nails were clamped tightly on her palms. Lucien, Ziheo is finally married. No matter how much he loves you, there will always be a suitable distance for you too. You have to get used to it. John and comforted her gently. Chui Lucien blinked and looked at her adoptive mother in surprise. Mom, you. What's wrong? Didn't you know about Jiang Rulin's past? Didn't Bing Qing already tell you while we were in Boston? That Jiang Rulin, she. What had happened in the past was due to the mistakes of the previous generation. It wasn't Rulin's fault. Moreover, she was a good girl. Ziheo already married to her. Since both of them had already received the marriage certificate, this marriage had been decided. Jeanin smiled and looked at Chui Lucien with reluctance in her eyes. Without saying anything, she walked back to the kitchen. She saw a table full of breakfast that was not eaten inside. Looks like she won't be able to get into the kitchen for the rest of her life. But mom, didn't you say that when you came back from Boston, you will uphold justice for me? You said that no one else was fit to be your daughter. In law other than me. Chui Lucien immediately walked to Xian Shuren, her eyes full of anxiety. How can you be on outsider's side? Jiang Rulin clearly used public opinion to be Ziheo's wife. Ziheo didn't even know her. Actually, he could easily divorce that woman. Ziheo didn't love her. They have no feelings with each other. This marriage was destined to be doomed. Mom, you said that you would help me. Dot John and just staring at Chui Lucien. Lucien, mom knew that you love Ziheo. You lived in Xian family for the last twenty years, and throughout your life, you have long known that you are destined to marry him. Mom also knew your dream since you were young is to quickly grow up and marry him. However, marriage is not a joking matter. Since Ziheo and Rulin are living a good life, you should bless their life. Mom will definitely take responsibility this time and help you choose a good husband. Chui Lucien lowered her head and suddenly smiled, tears flowing from her eyes. So, you also know how important Ziheo is to me. Also, concerning your father and grandfather, as long as you praise and say something good about Rulin, surely their anger will be gone. The old man loved you like his own granddaughter. His daughter. In Dot Law whom he rarely talked to for more than twenty years, suddenly became useless. Lucien, I rarely go home. When the situation calms down, only then can I enjoy my life. Jean and patted Chui Liuxian's hand lightly. Listen to your mother, stop crying. Chui Lucien didn't say anything. 
she held the Chanel pouch tightly in her hand. Her expression didn't change, but her cold eyes were no longer looking at Jianan. To go to her company, Jian Rulin had to walk a few minutes to get to the bus stop. At first, she was a bit stuffy, but her mood immediately improved when she inhaled the fresh morning air. As she was walking, a familiar black Land Rover appeared behind her and stopped next to her. Jian Rulin wanted to ignore it, but the car was parked next to her, and there was no reason for her to pretend not to see it. Jian Rulin stopped and looked at the driver in confusion. The car window slowly rolled downwards, revealing a delicate face. Xian Ziheo said nothing. Even through her sunglasses, she could still feel the measuring look in his eyes. The confusion lasted for a while, and then Xian Ziheo asked as if nothing had happened, isn't there a bus stop across the street from Greenville residence? Why do you have to walk this far? Not to my company. Jian Rulin secretly rolled her eyes behind her sunglasses. This young master born with a golden spoon in his mouth must have never taken a bus before. No wonder he did not know that the bus had a fixed route. Xian Ziheo smirked and pretended he didn't see the mocking look in Jian Rulin's eyes. He casually placed his arm on the window sill. He then glanced at the bus stop not too far from them. Aren't there too many people there? It's just a bus. It's normal to squeeze. A dollar can take us this far. It's worth it. Jian Rulin replied indifferently and continued walking towards the bus stop. Xian Ziheo was driving his car at a slow speed by her side. The closer she got to the bus stop, the faster her footsteps became. Suddenly, in the crowd, a man in his early twenties, sneaking his hand into the pocket of a middle-aged woman who was waiting for a bus. The act was clearly visible from Jian Rulin's side. Xian Ziheo saw it and his eyebrows furrowed. Jian Rulin acted as if she didn't see anything. When the man secretly took out the middle-aged woman's wallet, Xian Ziheo quickly took out his phone, wanting to record this scene. Jian Rulin, with her sharp eyes, saw his movement and immediately rushed to the door, suppressing his action. What are you doing? Are you crazy? What picture did you take? This situation is not suitable for everyone to step in. So I will send the photo to the police station as this is their job. What's wrong with that? Seeing Jian Rulin making such a fuss over nothing, Xian Ziheo glanced at her with a hint of amusement in his eyes. What if the thief's accomplice saw your actions? People like them, who were used to stealing, might just be desperate. If you meddle in other people's business, have you thought of how they are going to deal with you? Where is your common sense? Jian Rulin snatched Xian Ziheo's phone and when she saw that he had already taken the photo, she glared at him. What a meddler! Xian Ziheo stared at her for a moment before sneering, who doesn't have common sense? As he said that, he took his phone back from her and signaled her with his eyes to get in the car. Jian Rulin couldn't be bothered with him. Seeing that he was adamant, she turned around and walked towards the bus stop. Xian Ziheo raised his eyebrows and hit the horn. Jian Rulin stopped her steps. The thief seemed to be watching them. She turned her head and glared at Xian Ziheo while gritting her teeth. You did it on purpose, didn't you? If you don't want to be retaliated against that thief, get in the car. Xian Ziheo raised his eyebrows, no warmth in his eyes. No matter how reluctant she was, when Jiang Rulin saw the thief took a call, only asking a single sentence, then hung up, she immediately knew that something bad will happen. She saw him narrowing his eyes and looked at her as if he already knew that they had recorded his crimes and was waiting for an opportunity to attack. Jiang Rulin wasn't stupid. She quickly got in the car. She put her bag down heavily, raised her hand to comb the hair behind her ear, and angrily said, You little fucker. Xian Ziheo looked at her with a smile that wasn't a smile. He did not rush to drive but glanced at the anger in Jian Rulin's eyes and said, No wonder my friend who works in ZF said that the number of phone calls is too few and he doesn't even get many reports. 
so it turns out that most people have the same mindset of turning a blind eye just like you. Jiang Rulin sneered. What can I do even if I don't turn a blind eye? In this world, how many young people dare to speak frankly? In the end, there are still five sentences, who dares to do it. Dot. Xian Ziheo started the engine and drove the Land Rover away from the bus stop. He's not talking, but his eyes didn't seem that he agreed with her. Jiang Rulin laughed. This is society. I am just like everyone else, an ordinary citizen who does not dare to say anything because she is afraid of causing trouble. Unlike you, who are high up in the sky, if those criminals want to do anything to you, I'm afraid they'll have to look themselves in the mirror to see if they have the strength to do so. It seems like it's very easy to enrage you. Xian Ziheo smiled. Jiang Rulin deadpanned. What do you mean? After a moment of silence, Xian Ziheo said lightly, I'm sorry about Chui Lucien. Jiang Rulin immediately stopped talking and looked at him blankly. I didn't do it because of her. She is the granddaughter of a good friend of my grandfather who passed away. After she was born, she was left in Xian family for adoption, and like Xian Guiying, she also the beloved child of everyone in the Xian family. She is also the best choice for my future wife, whom my family has had high hopes for since I was young. But my feelings for her, almost like Guiying's, were not that of a man or a woman. As I told you, as long as she looks pleasing to the eye, the person who married me is the same as anyone else. Therefore, I have never openly rejected this marriage. After saying that, Xian Ziheo paused for a moment to see Jiang Rulin quietly listening, before continuing, after what happened, I went with the flow. On the one hand, I dispelled the public suspicions, and on the other hand, I made a very normal classification for my life. We were both at the age of marriage. Besides, I really consider your little hedgehog attitudes is charming. Jiang Rulin frowned at his little hedgehog remark. She glanced sideways at him and saw that he was faintly smiling. She rolled her eyes in dissatisfaction and muttered in a low voice that only she could hear clearly, You are the hedgehog. Your whole family is a hedgehog. There was a deep smile in Xian Ziheo's eyes as he drove steadily and said in a deep voice, Chui Lucien is extremely disappointed at the moment. Don't take any of what she has said to heart. So it turned out that he was just trying to console her by beating around the bush. Jiang Rulin rolled her eyes. I don't mind it. It was just so sudden, and I was confused as to what to do. That's for the best. Xian Ziheo's voice went back to its usual dryness. Usually, Jiang Rulin needs at least half an hour to get on the bus, but now, she only needs ten minutes to get to her company. She hurried out of the car, but before she could say thank you, the car left like an arrow that had left the bowstring. Her expression froze as she looked at the silhouette of the Black Land Rover, leaving the area with a bit of confusion in her eyes. Why did Xian Ziheo explain so much to her? Jiang Rulin went into the empty office and was about to arrange documents when, suddenly, a pile of photos fell out of nowhere and landed on the floor. She hurriedly squatted down to pick it up, but when she saw the content, her face immediately turned pale. She picked up the photographs on the floor one by one, which was the same color as twenty years ago. Each one showed stagnation of blood, the broken limbs due to falling from a high place, and a pair of resentful dead eyes still wide open. An extreme shock quickly spread through her body. Her body fell hard onto the floor. She looked at the photos one by one with disbelief. How could this be? This was a photo taken by a reporter 20 years ago after her mother had jumped off a building. These photos had sealed up because of the bloody and gore scene, so why they appeared on her desk. These pictures, as if they were recreated by a digital camera and it seemed to be new, piercing the eyes. 20 years ago, she was still so young, and together with Ijuan, they were carried downstairs by the adults. She watched numbly as her mother's body was carried away, and the stagnation of blood made her unable to understand what was happening in front of her. Jiang Rulin sucked in a breath of cold air, 
wanting to pull away from her sight, unable to look at the woman whose face was already covered in blood. Just as she was about to flip over the picture, her expression suddenly stiffened as she raised the picture again. This crystal necklace. The same necklace Jiang Rulin's mother had given her at the time, but she clearly remembered only one necklace and not two. Could it be that the necklace her mother wore was fake? But why would she take that fake necklace with her when she was committing suicide? So much so that until now, Jiang family had not discovered it in the past few years. But later on, they realized that the crystal necklace wasn't destroyed, and it was in Jiang Rulin's hands. Starting from there, they began to look for her traces. When it was close to 8 o'clock, her colleagues started walking into the office. They watched her sitting on the floor in confusion. Jiang Rulin hastily adjusted her expression, put the photos on the floor into a craft paper bag on the table, and stared at the craft paper bag in her hands. Where did this brown paper bag come from? Could these photos be placed here? Who had put these things in her possession? There weren't many people who knew about her past. Who did this? What did these people trying to say by showing her these pictures? Was someone trying to threaten her? Jian Rulin frowned and tightened her grip on the brown paper bag in her hand. As she saw more of her colleagues enter the office, she quickly put the bag back into the drawer without batting an eyelid. Xion Rugang, who had been on leave for two days due to an ankle injury, actually came to work. As soon as she entered the office, she said, Sister Jiang, a handsome man is driving a Ferrari downstairs wants to see you. Jiang Rulin raised her head just to see Xion Rugang shamelessly shrugged her shoulders. When I just walked the entrance, the man pulled me and told me to tell you that he was waiting for you. Jiang Rulin. Dot. Ferrari driver. The corner of Jiang Rulin's mouth twitched. Without thinking long, she knew which ancestor was downstairs. Yes, if I remember correctly, it must have been the latest Ferrari. I saw it in an auto magazine two months ago. It's so cool. Without a word, Jian Rulin lowered her head and signed another press release. After thinking for a moment, she stood up and went to the lobby. Just as she reached the first floor, she saw Qin Gingxin leaning against the reception desk and playing with the receptionist's hands. The receptionist's face was flushed red from shyness. Jian Rulin rolled her eyes and slapped Qin Gingxin's shoulder. What's up? I'm warning you. If you dare wasting my time again, don't blame me for kicking your ass. Hearing her voice, Qin Gingxin's attention shifted from the blushing receptionist to unfriendly Jiang Rulin. Why are you angry? Have I offended you? Yes, you did offend me, young master Qin. This is because I can't stand people like you. Would you stop bothering me? Even though this place is owned by Qin family, I still have a bit of personal freedom, right? Qin Gingxin snickered. He put his hands in his pockets and approached Jian Rulin step by step. Jian Rulin immediately took a cautious step back and glared at him, Stop, don't come near me. However, the fellow acted as if he did not hear her and walked towards her. Jian Rulin could not dodge in time, and her wrist was already grabbed by him. What are you doing? This is a public area. Let go. Did I get drunk last night? Qin Gingxin asked. Nonsense. Jian Rulin twisted her wrist but couldn't escape. She gritted her teeth in anger. Then who sent me back? Of course, both of us sent you back together. You are as drunk as a dead pig. You are so heavy. Ha! Huh. Qin Gingxin was startled and immediately pulled Jian Rulin into his embrace. He lowered his head and smiled maliciously. Did you do anything to me last night? Jian Rulin retorted coldly. What can I do to you? Stop being sentimental. You might as well worry about whether your good brother has done anything to me. Qin Gingxin just laughed. You mean Ziheo. You're not his types. I think even if you throw yourself into his arms, he will not do anything to you. 
Besides, you don't even have too much meat on your body. Besides me, who else can feel anything to you? Chapter 72 I've been looking for you for seven years you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 72 I've been looking for you for seven years as he spoke, Qin Gingxin glanced at Jiang Rulin's not dot two dot big bosom. Jiang Rulin almost stepped on his feet with her sharp heels while looked at him with her ashen face. I'm like your sister. Don't think I didn't know you were playing with me. I warned you, this joke is enough. I'm not joking. Because he was drunk last night, Qin Gingxin's lips had turned slightly pale. His eyes focused on the doubt in Jiang Rulin's eyes, and he restrained the teasing expression on his face, saying indifferently, I've been looking for you for seven years and found you with great difficulty. How can I have time to joke with you? Jian Rulin was about to say something when she suddenly froze. She looked at the smile and seriousness in Qin Gingxin's eyes and immediately used all her strength to shake off his hand. She took two steps back and combed her untidy hair. Eddie E.T. without saying anything, she walked towards the elevator. Ruolin. Qin Gingxin called out to her, but she hastened her steps. He strode toward her, and before she could get into the elevator, he wrapped his arms around her neck and pulled her back. Jian Ruolin, you coward. What's wrong with me liking you? Come, let's go out and have a chat. Who wants to talk to you? Let me go. Jian Rulin hit Qin Gingxin's arm and leg in an attempt to escape. Save your strength. With a face full of joy, Qin Gingxin hugged Jian Rulin and walked out the door under the staff's stunned gaze. Qin Gingxin. Let me go. Even if you don't want a face with so many people watching, I still want it. Let go. Qin Gingxin dragged Jian Rulin down the stairs and was about to push her into his car when she suddenly turned and bit his shoulder. The fuck? Jian Rulin, are you a dog? He quickly let her go. Jian Rulin immediately straightened up and refused to get into the car. She pushed the door shut, but Qin Gingxin stopped her and pushed her body against his car. Jian Rulin frowned. Qin Gingxin, you are the CEO of a multinational company. Do you have too much free time? I have to work and I wanted to earn money. Can you stop bothering just like when you were little? No matter what you wanted to do, you always dragged me along with you. Would you stop? We are not children anymore. Leave your job. I will support you. Qin Gingxin grinned. Jiang Rulin's mouth twitched. Support me. It's not your right to decide what I want to do. Isn't that my responsibility after you become my wife? I have hands and feet and I don't need you to support me. A rich young master like you only knows how to spend time playing and I don't have a time to play with you. Jian Rulin pushed Qin Gingxin impatiently. Get out of the way. I still have a job to do. If you continue to waste my time like this, I have to work overtime tonight. But he didn't move. Qin Gingxin kept blocking her path. Due to his height, he had almost blocked out all her vision. Jiang Rulin was displeased. Qin Gingxin. As I said, we are no longer children. Let's forget what happened when we were young. We are all adults now. I'm begging you, stop making me angry. When did I anger you? Qin Gingxin stared at her, puzzled. Jian Rulin moved her lips and wanted to tell Qin Gingxin all about her resentment when they were young, but she restrained herself. She clenched her fist with tears in her eyes and said with sadness and anger, How can you ask me that question, you shameless bastard? You knew what happened when we were little. How dare you ask me back? Qin Gingxin, you are a shameless bastard among bastards. I'm a bastard, so what? No matter how bastard I am, you are the only one in my heart. Qin Gingxin made it clear that even if he died, he would be utterly shameless towards her. Jian Rulin couldn't hold back her tears. What exactly do you really want from me? I missed you. I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to see you. 
I wanted to know if you were living a good life. That's it. Jiang Rulin was stunned. Right now, it is. Qin Gingxin nodded, not intending to say anything more. He suddenly realized that his woman was a bit timid. In order not to scare her, he could only say something simple. If it's like this, why didn't you say it earlier? Why do you have to behave like that? Jian Rulin's tense mood immediately disappeared as she pushed Qin Gingxin away. I'm fine. I ate and slept soundly, and everything was a thousand times better than when I was in the Jiang family. Qin Gingxin looked disappointed. I thought your life would be even more miserable without me. TCH. TCH. Jiang Rulin scoffed. You hope the situation changes otherwise? Qin Gingxin looked at her with an injured face. You woman, you're too heartless. Jian Rulin said nothing. She just turned her face away from him. All the memories when she was young were unhappy, so she preferred to hide it all deep in her heart. Qin Gingxin was just an old friend that she had coincidentally reunited in her memories. I am so sad. Qin Gingxin sighed. Jian Rulin ignored him. I am so sad. He repeated again. Jian Rulin was silent. Damn it. Jiang Rulin, you have guts. Qin Gingxin raised his hand in anger. When Jiang Rulin turned her head to glare at his hand, thinking that he wanted to hit her, his hand suddenly circled her head. Qin Gingxin pulled her neck and kissed her lips hard. Ugh. Jiang Rulin's eyes widened in shock as she struggled with all her might. Mmm, mmm. No. Uh, let me dot go. As she struggled desperately, Qin Gingxin held the back of her head tightly and bit her lip. To retaliate, Jian Rulin bit his tongue. Qin Gingxin immediately released her because of the pain. Jian Rulin raised her hand to cover her mouth and looked at Qin Gingxin with anger. She didn't even bother to slap his face. She wiped her mouth with her sleeve, glared at him fiercely, turned around, and walked towards the company's revolving door with quick steps. Qin Gingxin felt a burning pain in his tongue. He noticed the smell of blood, and his face was completely dark. Damn, he was bitten and bleeding. Jian Rulin walked into the company without looking back. Qin Gingxin didn't chase after her and just looked at her with disbelief. Sister Jiang, what happened to you? Seeing Jian Rulin's gloomy face, Xiong Rugang limped over her side. Did that handsome Ferrari man offend you? Jian Rulin shot her a sidelong glance. You haven't recovered from your ankle injury. Why are you here? Ugh. I felt bored at home and my parents took me to their house for two nights, but in the end, I had to face their sad faces every day. I couldn't stand it anymore, so I came to work. Xiong Rugang smiled as she pulled out the plastic stools and sat down at her desk. Jian Rulin remembered Xiong Rugang's request two days ago and started blaming herself. Damn it. She actually forgot about it. The house will be demolished tomorrow. My parents need to pack their things this afternoon. Xiong Rugang bitterly put her face on her desk. Sister Jiang, I am very depressed. It will be demolished tomorrow. Yes, they will start the demolition tomorrow morning. When I leave at noon, I've seen some forklift trucks passing by. They say that the deadline for us to move is this afternoon. So that means they will start the demolition tomorrow morning. Wait a minute, I'll make a call. Jian Rulin got up from her desk. She took her phone with her and quickly walked out of the office. She opened the call list to find Xian Ziheo's number. After a moment's hesitation, she called him. When the sound of a steady beep came from the phone, her heart was beating for no reason. This was the first time she had taken the initiative to call Xian Ziheo. She didn't know if he would answer her call or if he had time to do so. The dull beep sounded five to six times before it was finally picked up. A quiet voice came from the other end of the phone, is there a problem? Are you busy? 
Jian Rulin held the phone tightly by her ear. After a short pause, he said lightly, I'm in a meeting. Then I won't bother you any longer. Jian Rulin decided to end the call. What do you want? His voice crackled on the undisconnected phone. Jian Rulin immediately put the phone back to her ear. After a moment of hesitation, she said, things are a bit complicated. I can't explain it in two or three sentences. Since you are in a meeting, I won't bother you for now. The meeting will end in half an hour. If this is something important, come to my office and wait for me. All right. Thinking of Xiong Rugang's impending doom, she agreed directly. They both hung up the phone at the same time. Jian Rulin returned to the office, packed her things and took her bag. She saw Xiong Rugang before she left, Rugang, I'm going out for a while. Help me ask for a leave from the chief editor, as well as from publishing news for this afternoon. When she answered, Jian Rulin had already left in a hurry. This time, the traffic was light, and Jian Rulin took exactly 10 minutes to get to Xian Group. As she entered, security personnel did not detain her this time, nor did they check her work permit. They just raised their heads to look at her before quickly lowering their head down and busied themselves. Jian Rulin took the elevator to the 18th floor. When she walked out of the elevator, she noticed that the corridor was empty, but the lights were bright. There were two long, slender green pots outside each office, and the air was also very fresh. Jian Rulin noticed that the staff behind the glass walls on both sides looked at her with a curious look. She withdrew her gaze and quickly walked to the CEO's office. Xian Group's building had 30 floors and the building was very spacious. After walking about a hundred meters, she finally arrived at the CEO's office located in the corridor's innermost part. However, as she got closer, Jiang Rulin suddenly saw two trembling assistants from across the CEO's office. It was only then that she heard a loud voice coming from the office. It sounded as if Xian Ziheo was angry. His voice, which was usually soft and calm was now thunderous. Every rebuke was accompanied by a strong sense of anger and resentment. Jian Rulin glanced at the few people in the assistant's office. Xian Ziheo was a private and calm person, yet she can't help but wonder who had the ability to make him so angry. Are you Miss Jiang? An assistant with a stiff white face came out of the office and asked softly. I am. Jian Rulin nodded. From her looks, this girl in front of her was probably just an assistant to the CEO. In a place like Xian Group, only a few graduates looked to be just over 20 could climb up to this position so quickly. The little girl in front of her didn't have the temperament of a noble person. Her eyes were as red as a rabbit. The CEO had just finished his meeting with the construction bureau and is currently angry with the vice chairman of the construction bureau. Secretary Du says that President Xian is waiting for you, but it doesn't seem easy for you to see him now, the little girl said softly, how about this? Miss Jiang, why don't you sit here for a moment? All right. Jian Rulin nodded and sat on the sofa next to her. After she sat down, she turned to look at the closed sandalwood doors. Vaguely, she could hear angry curses coming from them. Any project that I look forward will always interfere by you. For the sake of a mere 10 million yuan, you didn't care about those people's life. It's fine if the builder is treacherous, but if you can control it, you should control it. I helped you get in touch with them, and now you're making such a big mistake. How are we, the investors, going to deal with this? The demolition hasn't begun and yet, there are already residents who wanted to commit suicide by hitting a forklift. Just what method are you using? Forcing a dead end. Until this matter is resolved, you are not allowed to touch a single brick in Bedford Street. Otherwise, don't blame me for firing you. All of the consequences will be on your shoulder. Deputy Chief Wang, you must be responsible for your mistakes. Jian Rulin raised her eyebrow. Bedford Street. Could it be that the thing that made Xian Ziheo angry had something to do with Bedford Street? 
Just as she was thinking about it, the thick and heavy sandalwood doors opened and the vice chief of the construction bureau, whom she had met in a previous interview, came out with a face as white as ghost. Jiang Rulin was sitting on the sofa in the corner and she could see from the door that was not tightly closed, the floor was covered with paper and A4 folders. She hesitated for a moment, not knowing if she should go in at the moment or not, but when she thought that the things she wanted to discuss were related to Xian Ziheo, she decided to strike the iron while it was hot. Perhaps it was the right time to go in now. Jiang Rulin got up and walked closer. Even though the office door was open, she still knocked twice. Xian Ziheo's entire body was slumped in the large chair behind his desk. He held half a cigarette between the fingers of his left hand and rubbed the middle part of his eyebrow with the other hand. He looked exhausted, and he was in a terrible mood. The open window blew the autumn wind and rolled up the papers on the floor. Seeing that Xian Ziheo not angry at her presence, Jiang Rulin quickly bent down and picked the A4 papers one by one, and at the same time, she found out that these were all business projects related to Bedford Street. When Jiang Rulin lifted her eyes, she realized that Xian Ziheo had opened his eyes at one point and looked at her. She stood up slowly and put the paper in the blue folder in her hand. Then she walked over and put it on his desk. It seems that I didn't come at the right time. Xian Ziheo didn't move, and his dark eyes were a little cold from the anger that had not yet disappeared. He watched indifferently as Jiang Rulin walked over and put down the folder. He continuing to purse his lips without saying a word. Jiang Rulin slowly opened the folder in her hand and flipped it twice. She then looked into his thick black eyes and said, I came to find you about the demolition of the alley at Bedford Street. From what I heard from outside, you seemed very angry with this project. Xian Ziheo stubbed out his cigarette in the ashtray at the corner of his desk. The sound of cigarettes being extinguished apparently reverberated loudly in the large, clean office, causing Jiang Rulin felt cold running down her spine. Jiang Rulin paused, then went on, a friend of mine, the girl with glasses whom you had seen the last time outside the Italian restaurant, lived on that street. The demolition order was issued a week earlier and now, they want all the residences there to move. When she told me about this matter, I was confused. That street is an excellent place to build a national fifth-class scenery, and from the style and features of the buildings built at the end of the Qing dynasty, as long as they are properly decorated, they will be comparable to the six ancient cities. Now, with the prosperity of H City, if we add tourism development, isn't it even better for H City? Your Xian family had extraordinary status in H City. Can't you develop it into a tourist area? Even if they wanted to make money, why should they demolish the place? It offends the older generation who grew up there, and they were destroying the good place that was handed down from the late Qing dynasty. Xian Ziheo took the folder next to him and then, turned the computer screen towards Jiang Rulin. Jiang Rulin subconsciously glanced at the computer screen and her face changed while looking at the headline and photo. This report and all the photos taken by eyewitnesses was purchased by the construction bureau at a high price. No wonder even as media journalist, you haven't received any news about it. His face was impassive. Chapter 73 I never knew you were this type of person I you are listening at novel full dot audio. Jiang Rulin frowned as she looked at the pictures on the computer screen, is this the scene on Bedford Street? When did this happen? One hour ago. Xian Ziheo's expression was cold and he looked exhausted. His tall body was propped up on a chair. Had they sent the victim to the hospital? Are they safe? All are still alive. Xian Ziheo observed an edgy look in Jiang Rulin's eyes until she shifted her gaze from him to the photo on the screen. Then, her lips moved slightly, a 70-year-old man crashing into a forklift to save his wife and cat, and died on the spot. His wife had a heart attack and was immediately sent to the hospital, where she was also pronounced dead. This is too much. Jiang Rulin took out her cell phone and was about to make a call when Xian Ziheo stopped her. What are you going to do? 
to make a call. I want to call the city overseer. Is there a problem with the construction bureau or is there a shortage in the earth resources bureau? Why is the developer who bought the land willing to risk the lives of innocent people? I have to ask someone to investigate this matter carefully. Isn't reporting all the way to me? Jiang Rulin stopped scrolling the phone book and looked up at Xian Ziheo in shock. She put down her cell phone. Then, what are you going to do about this? I already know what happened. Xian Ziheo's dark eyes focused lightly on her body. He paused before continuing in a low voice, I know what I am doing. I will do my best to find a more balanced method to deal with this. A method to counterbalance. Deal with it. Jiang Rulin suddenly laughed. It's just a matter of giving money to the victim's family, isn't it? Xian Ziheo pursed his lips and said nothing. Jiang Rulin immediately glared at him. I knew it. I really didn't expect you, Xian Ziheo, to be such a person. She was full of anger. Xian Ziheo looked at her indifferently, not angry or upset. Am I right? You, Xian Ziheo, who has been involved in the business world for years, will use this method to solve problems. Do you only know to solve your problems with money? A knot appeared on his forehead. Jiang Rulin, your grudge and misunderstanding against our property circle has reached tremendous. Bullshit. What you are trying to do right now is not something personal. How can I misunderstand it? Jian Rulin scoffed and she was truly angered. If you have the ability, go ask the bastard from the construction bureau to release these photos for public review. Why did they buy those photos and hide them? They had the guts to harm others, so they had the guts to shoulder it. Is your money really that great? By using your money, can you bring back all the dead? Xian Ziheo's gaze turned darker and his thin lips pursed into a line. Seeing Jiang Rulin's face flush with anger and hatred, he suddenly sneered. Looks like you still haven't found an opportunity to vent your anger. Jiang Rulin bit her lower lip. She hesitated for a moment, and then lowered her voice, I don't mean anything else. Just the way you treat human life as grass makes me hot. Tempered. Even if you didn't kill them, you were also involved. The way they forced them to commit suicide. They have done this without considering your investment, so once something happens, you will be the first person to be responsible. Xian Ziheo chuckled. You even insulted me earlier, and now you are trying to comfort my feelings. Xian Ziheo raised his bright eyebrows and looked at Jiang Rulin's pale face with a non-dot-smiling smile. Jiang Rulin frowned and lowered her head in silence. Why did you come looking for me? Xian Ziheo asked. Jiang Rulin still kept her head down, saying nothing. Xian Ziheo narrowed his eyes. Jiang Rulin, don't tell me you're angry. As he moved, Jiang Rulin stiffened and unwillingly raised her head. She stared at him with an unfriendly gaze. That's right. Xian Ziheo found it funny. What are you angry about? In solving this problem, you are willing to use the money to silence the people. Xian Ziheo looked at her for a moment, then said, What do you want me to do? Do you want me to reveal the truth to the public? Make the public distrust my company. Don't you understand the social phenomena these days? All of this was common knowledge. I am not in a position where I can only think for myself. Can't there be any other way? The deputy chief of construction bureau, Vice Chief Wang, had accepted the bribe, right? He's the one who took the developer's money and went to the bureau to get in touch with the sale of the land, right? It was he who gave those profiteers the rights, right? Xian Ziheo did not say anything, but he silently agreed. Jian Rulin took a deep breath, since you know all this, why didn't you find someone to deal with him? You still let him work under you, you scum. Don't try to think that I didn't know you were the big boss who dragged this thing. Xian Ziheo clasped his hands casually on the table and looking at the woman in front of him. He laughed lightly, do you know why Xian family once had military service, 
but then gave up on serving for the country, and switched to business. With so many people abandoning their morals to do the dirty business, they would rather not have those rights. Jiang Rulin was silent. Seeing she's listening, the smile in Xian Ziheo's eyes deepened. Let me give you an example. Who was the number one greedy officer under Emperor Qian Long of the Qing dynasty? Hushin. Jiang Rulin blurted out without thinking. He laughed, yes, it's Hushin. Since you are in the news industry, and of course you are more sensitive to this field. It is clear from both official and wild history that Qian Long knows Hushin is greedy, but he still did not do anything to him. Why is it, she was at a loss for words. Of course, Deputy Chief Wang's matter should be addressed. However, it is not as easy as you think. Exposure, dismissal, seizure of political power, imprisonment, or shooting, these are all methods to deal with the bad guys in your eyes, right? Xian Ziheo sighed. There is no fish in the water. It cannot be punished too much and it cannot be punished too lightly. Of course, I have to give the innocent a fair, but the way things develop and progress, if I don't take things seriously, it would be a heavy blow to myself, and even more so a devastating blow to Xian Group. I need to find the right time, not be emotional, understand. It's not that I didn't think about it, I just heard you say that you wanted to use the money to deal with this matter and I became furious. Perhaps what you said was a bit too much. Jiang Rulin lowered her voice. Chapter 74 I never knew you were this kind of person too you are listening at novel full dot audio. Xian Ziheo merely smiled, it's not that I can't see or hear a lot of things, but it's just that it takes time for me to solve it. Jiang Rulin nodded. Sorry, I was impulsive. Isn't that your nature? You're obviously a hedgehog, yet you still hide all your spikes. You're usually as meek as a cat. The moment you encountered something, you would immediately expose the thorns and then suddenly wound people. Jiang Rulin smirked. Since when did President Xian know me so well? Xian Ziheo smiled at her for a moment before looking at her with a cautious expression. As for the matter we are discussing just now, less than half an hour after the incident, the children of the victim rushed to meet us. They're the ones demanding us to pay for their parents' lives with money. Since they asked for money, of course, I'm willing to take care of it in the simplest way possible. Jiang Rulin was dumbfounded, her mouth was wide open. What kind of children are these? I presume that they had already thought that their parents were a burden and were unwilling to take care of them. Now that something like this has happened, it's convenient for them to earn a large sum of money as well. Xian Ziheo sneered. F asterisk CK. Jiang Rulin quietly swore, but Xian Ziheo heard it. He raised his eyebrows and smiled funnily at her. Tell me now, what do you need from me? He sat up straight from his chair, raised his left hand and placed it on his cheek, then tilted his head and looked at her. Jiang Rulin embarrassedly cleared her throat, since you already asked for it and this matter is involving you, I then I will be honest. Xian Ziheo nodded slightly. It's like this. My friend's parents refuse to leave the house. They also live in Bedford Street. Jiang Rulin paused. She did not know how she should tell him this. Leaving all this aside, let's talk about the architecture of the alley. If it were renovated and improved, it would be a very good place, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be more profitable for the tourism industry? That's why I came to find you. Nothing else. You came to look for me just because of this matter. Xian Ziheo looked at her. Jiang Rulin was puzzled. If not, what else? Xian Ziheo curled his lips. Mom didn't call you. Call. Does she have my number? Xian Ziheo did not answer and only raised his eyebrows slightly. Holding his chin with one hand, he sized her up with a single glance. Do you have i.catching outfits? Why are you wearing such old dot fashion colors every day? Jiang Rulin looked at him with a confused expression. What has that got to do with the clothes I'm wearing? 
she thought that dark-colored clothing was very suitable for her. Furthermore, her clothes were not too expensive and cheap. Why did Xian Ziheo ask her a question like this? Did he want her to wear a dress like Chui Lucien? If so, did she even need to wear thick makeup like her too? It's the mid-autumn festival this weekend. So. We will go to my grandfather's house that night. Jian Rulin. She became listless all of a sudden. Back to your grandfather's house. The house where he and your father live. Are you for real? Xian Ziheo smiled, his eyes clearly mocking her idiocy. Can I choose not to go? Why don't you go? Before she could finish it, Xian Ziheo said lightly, This time, we will not be able to avoid it. After all, you are a member of Xian family. The old man was angry with us and shut himself in the Xian family's ancestral hall for a few days without coming out. With that, he sighed again. Are you afraid? Who, who said I was scared? Jiang Rulin secretly rolled her eyes. That's good. The smile on his face disappeared and indicated with his eyes that if there was nothing else, she could leave. Jiang Rulin got up and walked towards the door. She only took two steps before she turned around abruptly. About Bedford Street. Demolition work will be temporarily halted, but it is basically impossible for the residents to stay there longer. Tell your friend's family to move as soon as possible. Xian Ziheo casually took the document in one hand and opened it as he spoke, without batting an eyelid. Although she did not know until when this demolition will be halted, but she was satisfied with the conclusion. She understood that all of this required time to resolve, so she did not keep pressing. Suddenly, the heavy sandalwood door was pushed open from the outside. Secretary Du pushed his glass into his nose and smiled at her. Miss Jiang. She nodded. Secretary Du opened the door for her and said to Xian Ziheo, President Xian, Mr. Qin is here. Jiang Rulin stopped walking and turned to Secretary Du in surprise. Mr. Qin. Which Mr. Qin? Her sudden question startled Secretary Du. He looked toward Xian Ziheo, not sure if he should answer or not. Who else can it be other than Qin Gingxin? Xian Ziheo's voice was heard from behind her. Jiang Rulin turned her body to the side of the door and looked outside. She didn't even need to ask where Qin Gingxin was before she saw that ghostly bastard walking towards her from the elevator. She was frightened. She immediately stepped back to Xian Ziheo's office and said to Secretary Du, don't let him know I'm here. Jiang Rulin quickly circled around the office under Secretary Du and Xian Ziheo's puzzled gazes, trying to find a place for her to hide. She suddenly looked at Xian Ziheo's wide desk and without saying anything more, she hurried towards him and crouched under his desk. Xian Ziheo was looking at her with bewilderment. At the same time, Qin Gingxin's laughing voice was heard from outside the office door, TSK, I intend to surprise you, but who would have thought that Secretary Du would run to tell you? Jiang Rulin squatted under the table and raised her head, only to see Xian Ziheo looking down at her with a frown. She quickly put her index finger to her lips and whispered, Shu, don't tell him I'm here. Then she put both hands together and waved at him. She then mouthed to him, please. Xian Ziheo's mouth twitched. He finally shifted his gaze away from her and looking at Qin Gingxin, who had entered. He then signaled for Secretary Du to leave first. As Secretary Du left, Qin Gingxin strolled with a smile on his face as he looked at his, Xian Ziheo, office from left to right, as one of the big investors in H City, you only have one pretty simple office. If outsiders come, they will surely laugh at you. Who would have thought that President Xian, who is quite popular amongst people, is a humble person? The reason you came here was to make fun of me. Not really, I'm not in a good mood. I came here to see your distressed face. When I saw that, my depressed mood improved a lot all of a sudden. TCH. Xian Ziheo scoffed. Qin Gingxin sat on the wide leather sofa. 
He casually picked up the magazine on the tea table and flipped through two pages, then threw it back in a bored manner. With his legs crossed, he tore off two buttons on his shirt collar and looked around. Your office is full of books. Is this an office or a library? Sien Ziheo deliberately ignored the warmth coming from his legs as he flipped the files he needed to sign. Did you come here to see the decoration? Then, how is it? This office of mine is not bad, right? You're too low. Key. Such a big office only has one office desk, one sofa, one coffee table, an air conditioner, and a whole bookcase on the opposite wall. The difference between your office in Boston and here is too big. Qin Gingxin suddenly noticed that there was a water dispenser beside him. He stood up and walked over, pouring a cup of water into a disposable paper cup and sipped. Also, you have to change your way of treating guests. You're not considerate at all. Xian Ziheo closed the document in his hand and looked at him. In this country, it's always good to be a little more low. Key. Her her. Qin Gingxin smiled mockingly. He took two sips of water, as if he wanted to say something but was hesitant. Xian Ziheo looked at him indifferently, your return this time is not just coming to see me, right? Qin Gingxin chuckled, you're right. I want to advise you to return to Boston with me. No matter how clever and capable Guiying is, in the end, she's not like you. Although Xian Company's shares have not declined throughout the year, but there is still no trend to rise. Dot. Chapter 75 I never knew you were this kind of person 3 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Gue Ying has learned about economic management since she was young, and she's brilliant. She had to experience the ins and outs of our family business. In a few years, Xian Company will definitely flourish in her hands. Xian Ziheo said indifferently. Then are you willing to be restricted? Oh my god. It's been five years. It's been five years and you still haven't gotten out of that relationship. Did you have to be so self-abusive? Qin Gingxin put down the paper cup and glanced at him. Seeing him flipping through the documents as if he had not heard anything, he knew that he, Xian Ziheo, didn't want to talk about it again, so he, Qin Gingxin, didn't say anything more. He walked to the French window, looking out the view. Actually, I don't care if you want to live here, but I know that you don't like being bound. Look at you right now, you are willing to live a normal daily life. This gave me a shock. Didn't you, young Master Qin, also change? You have started to be impatient and rarely play with women. Xian Ziheo chuckled. All those women are so boring. Qin Gingxin put his hand in his pocket, looking at the skyscraper in the center of the city from afar. His long and narrow peach blossom eyes slightly narrowed. After playing around for so many years, I'm tired of it. I think it's time for me to get married. Looks like you haven't reached the point where you can't be saved. Qin Gingxin said nothing. He just stood still in front of the French window, looking at the view of prosperity in H City from afar. The memory of that year flashed through his mind. At the age of 15, Jiang Rulin was dragged by him to a basketball court, where he summoned her to cheer his name like those cheerleaders. It rained heavily that evening, but the rain did not dampen the spirits of the players, but Jiang Rulin, who had swung the pompons like a fool, did not want to shout, Qin Gingxin, I love you, like the girls in the cheerleading team. Only when he rushed towards her, did he realize that she was unwell and that she had a fever. He carried her all the way home, leaving her in his bedroom that day. That night, he did not sleep at all because he was busy taking care of her. At that time, only God knew how worried he was. It was only then that he realized that he had always liked to bully her from a young age and that he didn't want her to play with other boys because he liked her. That night, as he sat on the bed and looked at her flushed red face, he couldn't help but kiss her on the lips. At that time, Jiang Rulin was as pure as a piece of white paper, and it should have been her first kiss. Qin Gingxin was really happy and thought that once Jiang Rulin grew up, he would marry her and bring her to his house as his wife and love her more than he loved himself. 
he vowed that he would protect her. Even if he bullied her, only he can bully her. The relationship had been kept in his heart for years, until seven years ago, when he and Ijuan ran to an abandoned warehouse and saw the naked Jiang Rulin cowering in the corner, almost trampled by a group of old men. He was furious and he wanted to kill them all. He still remembered how he punched them heavily, then rushed to take off his coat and was about to put it on her, but her eyes, her eyes at that time were filled with confusion and panic as if she was scared to death. After rescuing her, Qin Gengxin was transferred to the United States to continue his studies. He wanted to confess to Jiang Rulin that when he returned home, he would marry her and take her away from the Jiang family. He did not think that he would lose her once he returned. He tried to find her but all the searches were in vain. Like she had disappeared from this world. It once crossed his mind that Jiang Rulin might have gone abroad but Qin Gengxin had no money at that time and no one helped him. He could only rely on himself, so it was impossible for him to actually go abroad to find her. It wasn't until a few days ago in H City when he randomly visited a small company under Qin family, he saw her picture as well as her name on the media company wall. He was so surprised and happy because after a few years, he finally found her. In the end, that little woman seemed to have forgotten him and ran out as soon as she saw him outside the door. She was clearly still his little red, but in the seven years he hadn't seen her, she had grown thorns all over her body and no longer needs his protection. The pain in his tongue is still there. Qin Gingxin stuck out his tongue and touched it again. Instantly, he hissed in pain, and his hand immediately turned into a fist. Damn it! It seemed that his coercion was no longer working. What the hell was he supposed to do to get her to him? At this moment, Jiang Rulin curled up under the table. Her legs and feet were numb, and her whole body ached. Qin Gingxin didn't seem to plan to leave. She couldn't hear his voice from below and didn't know what he was doing. She raised her head and saw Xian Ziheo look down at her at the same time. She stiffened and grinned awkwardly. She put her hands together and waved at him, continuously saying, Please, please, don't let him see me. The corner of his mouth quietly suffused with a teasing smile. Xian Ziheo raised his eyebrows and looked at the uncomfortable expression on her face before withdrawing his gaze. His hand then casually signed his name on the files. Jian Rulin had just lowered her head and an A4 paper was suddenly handed to her. She raised her head abruptly and saw clean and elegant calligraphy written on it. It said. You owe me one. Embarrassed, she snatched the paper from him and glared up at him. F asterisk CK taking advantage of others. Robbery against your family. Such a despicable person. She raised her hand, indicating that she wanted to borrow a pen. Xian Ziheo raised his eyebrows and handed the delicate pen to her. Jian Rulin carefully wrote a line of words on the paper and then reluctantly returned it to him. Xian Ziheo took the pen and looked down at the small, neat words on it. You can ask for my help in the future. Except for murder and arson. He smiled and looked down at her serious expression. He didn't return the pen or paper but put the paper in a folder in his hand. How long are you planning to stay in H City this time? Xian Ziheo suddenly said. Jiang Rulin froze for a moment. She raised her head and looked at him, only to realize that Xian Ziheo was talking to Qin Gengxin. I was planning to stay here for a week. Qin Gengxin's voice paused for a moment. However, if there is nothing too important that needs my help, I plan to stay here for a while. Then, the two of them started chatting from the global economic crisis to recent changes in the business community, to political changes and domestic economic changes. Jian Rulin felt bored and seeing that Qin Gengxin not leaving, she lowered her head and rested her chin on her bent knee. Although this desk was quite spacious, the place under it was very narrow. She had to press her body tightly against her leg. Her eyelids were getting heavier and heavier. Suddenly sensing the weight on his leg, Xian Ziheo lowered his head and saw that Jian Rulin had fallen asleep just like that. She even fell asleep while leaning on his leg. 
What are you looking at? What's so funny? Qin Gingxin's voice was suddenly heard. Dot Xian Ziheo cast a sidelong glance at him. I have a kitten living here, and it sleeps next to my feet. Do you want to come over and take a look? Chapter 76 Be careful I you are listening at novel full dot audio. TCH You know how to raise a cat. Who will believe it? Qin Gingxin abruptly gave up the idea of taking a look around. He looked at the wristwatch in his hand. Are you busy this afternoon? How about you accompany me for a drink? I'm going to the bureau this afternoon to take care of some things. Xian Ziheo calmly moved his legs to make the kitten sleep more comfortably. Of course you are very busy. Since I just arrived here two days ago, then I'm just going to take a look around. Qin Gingxin raised his hand to straighten his collar and turned to leave. Jiang Rulin was sleeping soundly. She refused to get up as her whole face was pressed against a warm spot. She smacked her lips in her sleep and smiled in satisfaction. Xian Ziheo lowered his gaze and glanced at her sleeping posture, which was very different from last night. It's kind of funny. There were some faint sounds in her ears. Jiang Rulin opened her eyes and realized that she was sleeping in Xian Ziheo's office. She quickly got up and realized that she was once again sleeping on a large sofa. She looked at the man who was engrossed with his works on the other side of the desk. You're awake. Xian Ziheo's voice sounded faint. Jian Rulin stared blankly at him for a moment, only to see that he did not look at her. Ugh. I didn't think I'd fall asleep. Sorry, if I caused you any trouble. Xian Ziheo let go of the mouse and sank back into the seat behind him. He turned his head to look at her and said unenthusiastically, There's no trouble. It's just your drool. Jian Rulin's face tightened as she quickly covered her mouth with her hand. Her eyes filled with surprise. Would she drool in her sleep? Xian Ziheo looked at her nervous movements with a straight face. That. Jian Rulin couldn't believe that she would drool in her sleep. This was the first time she had slept like this. Thinking that it might be due to her abnormal sleeping attitude, she felt very embarrassed. She giggled and ran to his table. She lowered her head to look at his pants, sorry, I did not stain your pants, right? Seeing that she had taken the bait easily, Xian Ziheo continued to maintain his poker face. Jian Rulin could only look at him. As their gaze met, a playful smile slowly appeared in his eyes. Jian Rulin then glared at him. Are you messing with me? Xian Ziheo raised his eyebrows and spread his hands. Who would have thought that you would be so easily deceived? I. Jian Rulin's mouth twitched. I just woke up. When I woke up, my brain wasn't in perfect condition. I didn't even have time to think about it. He just smiled, looked at the time on his wrist, and asked in a deep voice, It's almost six o'clock, what do you want to eat? It's six o'clock. Jian Rulin looked at the time in shock and cried out, Heavens! Have I slept for that long? If I continue slacking off, the chief editor will fire me one day. Does he dare? Xian Ziheo sneered and stood up. He took his coat jacket from the coat stand and placed it in the crook of his arm. Mom normally doesn't eat much. To avoid her whimsical cooking, let's eat outside. You wanted to treat me. Jian Rulin looked up at the man who was a head taller than her. Otherwise. You want to treat me. I'd be more than happy to do that. Xian Ziheo sidled around the table while laughing, took the electronic key, and headed outside. Sigh. How can you be like this? I just said it casually. How could a journalist like me deserve to treat a man like you, President Xian? Jian Rulin followed in his steady footsteps. The two walked out of the office together, as most of Xian Group's office staff had already finished their work. She jogged up and followed closely behind him. She did not want the atmosphere around her to be silent and awkward, so she asked, why did you suddenly inviting me to dinner? 
This is the first time you invite me, right? Xian Ziheo did not answer and had already entered the private elevator, which required a password. Only then did Jiang Rulin realize that the two of them had reached the private elevator at the end of the corridor. She couldn't help but look at it in astonishment. When the elevator door was about to close, the door slowly reopened. Xian Ziheo glanced at her doubtfully. Why are you still standing there? This is a special elevator for the CEO. Jiang Rulin looked at the small but beautiful words on the wall thoughtfully. His refined eyebrows creased slightly. Jiang Rulin, you did it on purpose, right? Hmm. Do I? She blinked and smiled innocently. Xian Ziheo pursed his lips and said nothing. He gave her a bland look before slowly closing the elevator. Surprised, she looked at the numbers in front of her with astonishment. F asterisk CK. With a low curse, she turned around and ran towards another elevator and rushed inside. As she hurried to the first floor, she saw Xian Ziheo walking out of the brightly lit glass door. She took large strides to catch up to him and secretly glared at his back in dissatisfaction. Was Xian Ziheo waiting for her? The elevator had stopped for so long, it was obvious that he was waiting for her. She was not stupid. Jiang Rulin just wanted to take revenge for his teasing earlier but her plan didn't work at all. She stared at Xian Ziheo's back while cursing him quietly. She followed him to the parking lot. Then Xian Ziheo stopped and cast her a glance that was neither cold nor warm. Jiang Rulin's resentful stare was replaced with a warm smile. Xian Ziheo snorted and pressed the electronic key. A DDD sound was coming from the car. Although she didn't want to go to the restaurant with him but right now, H City was at its peak. It was tough for her to get a taxi at this time. Since there were free rides and meals, she better use this opportunity. Save time and save money. Xian Ziheo sighed as he quietly glanced at the satisfied expression on her face as she sat in the car. What do you want to eat? He asked lightly as the car was driven out of the parking lot of Xian's group. Anything is fine, as long it's your treat. There has to be a taste. Then let's eat spicy food. Sichuan cuisine. Hunan cuisine. Sichuan food is quite good, especially the snacks. Let me think. Xian Ziheo stopped asking and drove in silence. His long boned fingers easily gripping the steering wheel. His movements looked sleek and calm. Jiang Rulin withdrew her gaze and felt that the atmosphere inside the car was a bit stuffy. When they were both together, there was no topic for them to discuss. She couldn't just be a chatterbox. The atmosphere inside the car was really uncomfortable. She looked down and saw that there was a CD holder next to the VOD. She hesitated, not sure if she should casually move the thing in his car. Jiang Rulin carefully picked up the disc. Xian Ziheo seemed to have seen it, but he didn't make a move to stop her. She took the disc and flipped it over. She placed a pleasant dot looking disc without the name of the song on the DVD and whispered, Can I listen to the song? Do whatever you want. Jiang Rulin smiled and pressed two buttons on the DVD. I thought I'd cry, but I didn't I was just staring at your footsteps my last blessings to you isn't this a kind of comprehension. Let me see myself clearly though the pain of no love day and night, in the deepest recesses of my soul I thought I'd get my revenge, but I didn't when I saw the woman I loved she was actually as helpless as a child isn't this a kind of comprehension. Let you see yourself clearly being loved is a luxury of happiness it's a pity you never cared ah. That was the end of a relationship ah. My heart was on the verge of desolation if our love be wrong may you and I not suffer for nothing if you have given in your heart, you should be satisfied ah. What a painful realization, you were all of me. It's just that I look back at every step of the way they are all so lonely ah. What a painful realization, you were all of me. I just want you to break free from the shackles of love the bondage of love, the wanton pursuit stop suffering for love. This was a piece of Li Zongsheng's comprehension. It had been popular many years ago, 
and it still sounded full of charm today. However, after listening to it, it actually started circulating again. Jiang Rulin was stunned. Was this the only song left in it? She turned her head to look at Xian Ziheo, only to see his thin lips were pursed into a straight white line, expressionlessly staring straight ahead. He didn't seem to like this song. His slanted brows were gradually wrinkled. Ah! How painful is your comprehension! You were my everything! The song resonated in the car, then suddenly stopped. She watched in astonishment as Xian Ziheo, with one hand on the steering wheel, quickly opened the DVD with his other hand and took out the disc. He casually tossed the disc out of the window. Chapter 77 Be careful too you are listening at novel full dot audio. Jiang Rulin was immediately stunned by his sudden movement. As the window closed, Xian Ziheo's right hand held the steering wheel again. There was no change in his expression. It was as if the cold feeling he had released at that moment had disappeared without a trace. Such a man with such a strong sense of self-control and hidden emotions. So frightening. Jian Rulin looked at him like that for so long, until she saw a red light at the intersection. The car slowly stopped. Xian Ziheo looked at her indifferently, what do you want to eat? Ah. Haven't thought about it yet. Jian Rulin hurriedly retracted her gaze and looked straight ahead. Then hurry up and think about it. Xian Ziheo acted as if nothing had happened. Jian Rulin was looking at the traffic ahead of her but her mind was in a bit of a mess. The disc seemed to have been in his folder for a long time, maybe he had forgotten what was in it. But why was there only the song, Comprehension, on the disc? That song was clearly so sad and helpless. She suddenly remembered what Xian Ziheil had said to her outside the Bureau of Civil Affairs. If she can't love him, it will be the same for everyone. What kind of woman could be so loved by Xian Ziheil? And what kind of woman can hurt a man like that? She couldn't help but turn her head to peek at him again. It was getting dark, and the main road of H City was already lit up, casting a faint shadow on the side of his handsome face. Suddenly, out of the corner of her eye, she saw a small hot pot with Sichuan cuisine by the side of the road. Why not choose this one? Can you eat a spicy dish? Jian Rulin pointed towards the stall. Xian Ziheo glanced in the direction she pointed, and without saying anything, he drove the car to the intersection and turned around to head towards the stall. The car stopped in front of the door. Jian Rulin got out of the car first. Are you sure you can eat spicy dishes? As the two of them entered, Jian Rulin asked again, a little worried. Xian Ziheo casually looked at her with a pair of eyes that were neither warm nor cold. She immediately stopped asking and became angry. She thought, since you don't want to be polite, then I won't be polite with you. Welcome, may I know how many people are dining? Jian Rulin said, two people. The waiter led them to the seats inside. They both walked through the crowded tables and into the room. Seeing that there were still empty seats, she smiled while saying, looks like the food in this stall is pretty good, so many customers. Xian Ziheo said nothing and just sat down. He took the menu from the waiter and placed it by his side without looking at it. If you like it, order it yourself. Seeing that he was not used to the place, Jian Rulin quickly sat down. She lowered her head to open the menu and began to look at the list of food one by one. After a while that she raised her head and looked at Xian Ziheo. Would you like to eat vegetables or meat? Lamb or beef? Do you want to eat duck intestines? Vegetable. Oh. She looked at the menu again and ticked the food she wanted to order. After looking at the menu carefully, she handed the menu back to him. Look, is there anything else you want to add? I did not order too much food. Xian Ziheo took the menu without looking at it and handed it to the waiter. What would you like to drink? The waiter asked. Mineral water. Mineral water. They both talked at the same time. Jiang Rulin immediately looked at him. 
Xian Ziheo also cast a look at her. Sure, please wait a moment. The waiter took the menu and left. At the same time, the other waiter brought the bottom pot she ordered. In less than a minute, a boiling heat spread between the two of them. I'm afraid you're not used to the food here. Jian Rulin took a bottle of mineral water from the waiter and opened the lid as she spoke. Xian Ziheo raised his brows. What do you mean? People like you usually go to luxury hotels or special high dot class places. The food you eat is specially made, even liquor must be specially prepared by the country. Xian Ziheo took off his coat and casually placed it on the back of the chair behind him. When he turned around, he said, from what you said, should I live in Zongnanhai like other leaders? Should I have a house there too? Don't you have a house there? Xian Ziheo. He looked at her silently, his eyes full of contempt. Why do you look at me like that? Am I wrong? As a media reporter, shouldn't you be investigating the truth from the rumors? We are all human beings. I eat what you eat and stay in a hotel where you'll stay. The difference between the two of us is that I am a businessman. He had no expression. Didn't I say it before? I've always felt that these rumors were too godlike. Jiang Rulin rolled her eyes. Xian Ziheo only smiled, and then the waiter brought the plate they had ordered, and soon the red and white mandarin pots were filled with food. Jiang Rulin lifted her chopsticks and stirred the pot gently. I'm worried you won't like spicy dishes, so I ordered a mandarin duck pot. Here, you can eat it. How do you know I don't like spicy food? Xian Ziheo raised his eyebrows. I'm just guessing it. He chuckled as if she had guessed correctly. Ambiguity atmosphere enveloped them both. Forty minutes later, they both walked out. Jian Rulin raised her head and looked at the night sky where the moon and stars were almost invisible. She took a deep breath and said, I overate. I need to walk to digest my food. Xian Ziheo walked past her and said, This street is three kilometers away from the Greenville residence, walk by yourself. Ha! Huh. Jian Rulin turned her head abruptly and looked at Xian Ziheo's back as he walked towards the parking space. She followed him quickly and looked at his figure speechlessly. She muttered, I'm just saying what I should do. Not that I wanted to do it. Xian Ziheo didn't say anything. Once he got into the car, Jiang Rulin just stood there and looked at him. Her indifferent expression showed nothing, but she seemed to be thinking. Then, she got into the car. After eating their fill and drinking, the atmosphere inside the car became awkward again. By the time they returned to the Greenville residence, it was already 7.30 p.m. Pushing open the door, Jiang Rulin habitually took off her shoes and changed into slippers before placing the bag in the locker next to the door. Suddenly, her body stiffened when she saw two people in the living room. Jianan was watching TV. She was going to stay here for a month, so it wasn't surprising. The most surprising thing was that Chui Lucien was still here. You're back. Didn't you get off work early? Why are you coming back a little late? Jianan got up and happily watching the two of them enter the door. From the corner of his eye, Jiang Rulin saw the disbelieving and dejected look in Chui Liuxian's eyes when she noticed them returning together. Jiang Rulin smiled and said softly, We just. Mom, you usually don't have dinner, so I accompany Rulin out for a casual meal. Xian Ziheo's voice suddenly cut her off. He sounded like a husband who had a good relationship with his wife. It couldn't be any more natural as he closed the door behind her. No wonder. Jeanan smiled and nodded. Ziheo. Chui Lucien stood up and greeted him with a smile as if she was the wife who was waiting for her husband to return home. She raised her hand to take the coat he had taken off after entering the room. Xian Ziheo paused for a second. He held his coat in his hand as he glanced at the smiling Chui Lucien, then passed it to Jiang Rulin who was beside him. He looked at Chui Lucien with a faint smile, why are you still not home? 
aren't you afraid the old man is worried? Although Chui Lucien did not get the coat, her expression did not change. Following his words, she smiled and said, Ziheo, I want to stay here with mom, but mom said that it was not appropriate. So I asked someone to clean the house you bought for me. How about that? Are you surprised? Jian Rulin ignored their conversation. She was a little taken aback when Xian Ziheo suddenly passed his coat to her. Seeing his overly natural action, she didn't say anything. She took the coat and hung it on the hanger. It took quite a while for my house to be ready. Luckily, at the moment, I also have a friend from a home improvement company, so she helped me. Now, your second room has some furniture and daily necessities, so I can stay here with mom for a while. Chui Lucien continued. Xian Ziheo's expression did not change, you want to stay at Greenville residence. That kid said it's been many years since I hugged her to sleep. When she was young, she was always afraid of thunder. Remembered when she asked you to accompany her, but you refused to sleep with her. At that time, I could only hug her. She's been sticking to me since she was young and I haven't been back for so many years, that's why she's really attached to me. She insisted on staying here with me. After saying that, Jeanne intentionally looked at Jian Rulin. Rulin, you don't mind, do you? Chapter 78 Be careful 3 you are listening at novelfull.audio What can Jian Rulin say? Moreover, she could see remorse and helplessness in Jean En's eyes. She knew that Jean En also doted on her goddaughter, she pursed her lips and said, Why would I mind? You. Originally. A family. Chui Lucien suddenly smiled at her, Sister Lon, I will probably bother you more in the future. Huh, what do you mean by disturbing? Jian Rulin felt that her, Chui Lucien, acting skills were very good. Although she and Xian Ziheo had no relationship, how can she not see Chui Liuxian's clear motives? Jian Rulin did not know whether she should like her or she should recognize her position in this family. She retreated to her bedroom to make room for the three of them to spend their time together. Wait. Xian Ziheo suddenly called out to her. Jian Rulin turned and saw him walking towards her. Xian Ziheo suddenly raised his hand and placed it on her forehead. Didn't you say you weren't feeling well when you were on the road? Looks like you have a fever. Hurry up and take medicine. As he spoke to her, he placed his arm around her waist and pushed her stiff body towards the master bedroom. Jian Rulin stared at his face, which was as beautiful as nature, with suspicion in her eyes. Xian Ziheo brought her into the room and pushed her out of sight. Then he put his hand down and started rummaging through the drawers. What are you doing? She whispered in confusion. He simply turned his head to the side and glanced at her without saying a word. Jian Rulin came to a realization. Did he do all this to make Chui Lucien retreat? He clearly said that this marriage was just to shut the people's mouth and had nothing to do with love, but even so, he still respected this marriage. At the very least, wouldn't it make things difficult if there was a third party between them? She quietly watched him close the drawer. She felt a bit funny, but at the same time, she felt touched. Was Xian Ziheo defending her? Even if he was being kind to her, she had truly accepted his kindness in her heart. Jian Rulin smiled at him from the bottom of her heart. Xian Ziheo closed the drawer again and turned to look at her casually. The old master affirmed the marriage between Chui Lucien and me. You must be prepared when we go to Xian Mansion this weekend. Jian Rulin nodded. I know. His calm gaze lingered on her face, then he walked out. Rulin has a fever. Is it serious? Does she need to go to the hospital? Jean An's concerned voice came from the living room. It's not a serious fever, just let her rest early today. Xian Ziheo said indifferently, as he looked at Chui Lucien, how's grandpa's health? Chui Lucien had been standing there in a daze the entire time. When she heard Xian Ziheo talk to her, 
she immediately raised her head and a sweet smile quickly appeared in her seemingly well-trained eyes. Grandpa's body is fine, but he really missed you. Ziheo, are you going back at the mid-autumn festival this weekend? Seeing him nod, Chui Lucien immediately became happy. Really? Then I must tell Grandpa about this good news sooner. Emm, tell the old man that Roland will come with me too. We will both spend the mid-autumn festival together. The smile in Chui Liuxian's eyes disappeared in the blink of an eye. She looked at Xian Ziheo in shock, but when she saw his calm expression, she couldn't help but uttered a low, oh. It's a little late. You better go back. Since the old man likes you, then don't stay outside too long and go home earlier. Xian Ziheo said softly. I want to stay here with mom for a few more days. Chui Lucien approached the silent Jonan. She seemed to have found the strongest reason to use and was brimming with smiles. This child. Jonan smiled. She understood that this was not a good idea, but when she saw her, Chui Lucien, pain smile, she didn't have the heart to refuse her. Jonan glanced at Xian Ziheo and saw he was still calm. Ziheo, didn't Roland just arrive at H City recently? She definitely doesn't have many friends here. Lucien is the same age as her, so maybe they will be a good friend once they get to know each other. Xian Ziheo immediately wanted to object, but Chui Lucien cut him and hurriedly said, That's right. Sister Lan is so easygoing. We will definitely get along well, Jiang Roland, who was in the bedroom, shivered for no reason. Good friend. Why she felt that it was like the scene of the first wife and concubine being in the same room, outside they enjoying time together but inside, they wanted to stab each other. Since Jonan had already spoken, Xian Ziheo naturally couldn't say anything more. He nodded and climbed the stairs to the study room to handle some official matters. Mom, tomorrow, I will go with you for skin treatment. Seeing Xian Ziheo go upstairs, Chui Lucien did not cling to him. Instead, she turned to the only person in the family who loved her and said with a smile. You haven't been back in a long time. I know there is a very good spa in the city. Child, only you can make your godmother happy and know what she likes. Jeanin smiled lovingly. Of course, I've always been by your side since I was little. I always pay attention to what you like, and I also want to spend my whole life with Ziheo to filial piety. Jeanin was overjoyed. Oh, your little mouth is getting sweeter and sweeter. As the two of them chatted, Jiang Rulin could no longer sit still in the master bedroom. She wanted to take a shower and sleep. As she came out of the bedroom, she saw Chui Lucien and Jean and laughing merrily like a mother and daughter. Rulin, is your body unwell? Jean and asked anxiously when she saw her coming out of the bedroom. It's nothing, I just caught a small cold. Jiang Rulin smiled. Then, she smiled at Chui Lucien, who behaved in a very proper manner. You have to take good care of yourself. Since you have just taken medicine, you should rest early. I will sleep after the shower. Mom, quickly adjust your time difference. Otherwise, sleeping late like this will not be good for your body too. I know. Quickly take a shower. It's not good to take a shower late at night. If your cold still doesn't go down, I will ask Ziheo to find an extra blanket and take it to the room later. Ugh, no. There's no need. Jiang Rulin immediately lowered her head, smiling shyly as she walked towards the bathroom. Once the bathroom door was closed, the noise outside could no longer be clearly heard. Two hours later. In the study room on the second floor. While Xian Ziheo was checking some documents that had been sent by the Bureau of Lands, his mobile phone suddenly rang. He looked at the caller and casually answered it but before he could say anything, a soft and cautious voice came from the other side, Ziheo, can you not be so distant to me? He sighed. Marriage is not child's play, Lucien. But I know you don't love her. I know you very well. 
You never knew her and I also know you never came back here after you got married. You don't like her at all, so why must you treat me like this? Can't you treat me like you did before? Don't always rely on the past. You're the same as Guiying. Of course, there will be love and concern. But you treated Jiang Rulin so well. I know she wasn't sick at all. Both of you were just using this reason to avoid me. It's good that you understand. Xian Ziheo did not elaborate further. His eyes were still focused on the computer screen, and tapped on the mouse button. Grandpa will not agree. You knew better what will happen if you bring her home. She will not be accepted. Grandpa and Dad don't like her. Why do you still want to make them angry? Xian Ziheo eyebrows gradually closed. He did not reply to her question. He was looking at the document on the screen intensely. Suddenly, his eyes narrowed and his expression turned cold. The Bureau of Land Control actually dared to play a word game with him. They wanted to use this as an excuse. He put the phone on his neck, tilted his head and held the phone. On the other side, Chui Lucien heard the sound of the keyboard, and she finally choked with sobs. Ziheo. All right, rest early. Without waiting for her to respond, he suddenly hung up the phone and glared at the documents on the screen. Then, his hand returned to the keyboard. Chapter 79 Be careful for you are listening at novel full dot audio. Achoo! Jian Rulin rubbed her nose and sighed helplessly. Did she really catch a cold? Xian Ziheo did not return to the bedroom last night. When she woke up in the morning, she heard Jean and say that he had been working until midnight and then fell asleep in the study room. Last night, she was sleeping with her hair wet, so in the morning, she woke up with a stuffy nose. It seemed that she really had a cold. Jian Rulin tried her best to ignore the weight in her mind and carefully checked the press release that would be released within an hour. At that moment, little Lin, who had helped her deliver the news yesterday, walked into the office and placed a pile of manuscripts on her desk. Sister Jiang, I almost died of fear when I went to interview her yesterday afternoon. What's wrong? Jiang Rulin raised her head and saw that little Lin's delicate face was ashen white. She couldn't help but look at her, puzzled. There was a gunfight near Zhongshan Road, two policemen were killed at the scene, and several officers who escaped were also seriously injured. The thugs who fired the shots on the streets did not look like simple thugs, but it should be those gangsters from Black Market. Little Lin patted her chest in fear. Jian Rulin was stunned. When did it happen? Why is there no news? Who dared? It seems that not many media outlets were present at the time, so I did not dare to take pictures of them. Those people were too violent, anyone approaching would be shot. I didn't even dare to lift the camera. At that time, even if someone secretly took a photo and sold it to the media, no one would dare to publish it. I tried to investigate this story. Those were the people who tried to threaten Xian Ziheo's last month. Jiang Rulin's heart thumped wildly. Xian Ziheo's antagonism against the Dark Syndicate over the years had indeed made many thugs grit their teeth angrily. Several rewards have been offered to anyone who can bring his head. Is it true? Xiong Rugang walked over with a limp. She looked at Jiang Rulin worriedly. Sister Jiang, President Xian is your husband. You must also be careful in the future. Jian Rulin looked at Xiong Rugang and Little Lin in surprise, me. Yes, I heard from the news that this gang is getting stronger. They used to hide their abilities very well, but for some reason, they seem to be unable to sit still anymore. They've been out a few times to stir up trouble. However, none of the media outlets dared to report it. Even the Ministry of Commerce is not able to intervene in this matter. Sis Jiang, you must be careful. Only the people in our company know who you are, while most others do not know that you are the young mistress of Xian family. That's why you're able to live a peaceful life now. Little Lin looked at her worriedly. Anyway, I really saw their method. 
It was terrifying. It was like a Hong Kong shooting movie in the 1980s where one would be killed with one shot. I'll pay attention to it. Jian Rulin's thoughts raced, but she did not say anything in the end. Little Lin and Xion Rugang returned to their desk to continue the work. Jian Rulin lowered her head to look at the manuscript in her hands and a layer of doubt gradually appearing in her heart. Was that why Xian Ziheo wanted her to stay at Greenville residence? He wanted to prevent her from being harassed by the media and to ensure her safety. She glanced up at her computer screen and saw that someone was adding her MSN, Jiang Rulin clicked the mouse to open the other party's profile. It didn't have much information, even the MSN's name was only a simple chain with three letters. There was a message from the other party. Little red, black lines immediately appeared on her forehead. Jiang Rulin paused for a moment, then accepted his friend's request. She then typed on her computer, how do you know my MSN? Chin. You are one of my employees, isn't it quite easy for me to check your information on MSN? But again, I rarely used it. Usually, I just received an email and made a call or video chat whenever I have something important. I really don't understand why girls like this app so much. Jian Rulin rolled her eyes slightly and typed. Why did you add me then? If you have something to say, make a phone call. Chin. But you're not answering my call. Sob, Lan. Did you call me? Chin. Jian Rulin looked at the ellipsis Chin Gingxin sent and was dumbfounded. She looked at her cell phone and found two missed calls. She checked her phone and found that it was muted but she hadn't switched it. She looked at the settings and it wasn't muted. She had been using this phone for two years and almost forgot about it. This phone was a graduation present given by Han Shuegang when she graduated from university. It had been poorly used and had also been modified before. She was unwilling to throw it away and in these two months, she had completely forgotten about the origin of this phone. Only now did she realize that something was wrong with her phone. After a while, she finally typed on the keyboard. Lon. My phone seems to be broken. I didn't hear the call. Chin. Grinning, really. Let me buy you a new one. Tell me, do you want an iPhone or a Samsung? Or Nokia? Lon. No need. I am not so poor that I need a man to buy me a new cell phone. Besides, we have nothing to do with each other. The other side paused for a long time before replying. Chin. Little Red, are you busy tonight? If you have no plans, come out for dinner with me. I just arrived at H City and my friends will bring their girlfriends. I have no one and it's going to be very awkward. Lon. What dinner? Do you really need to bring a girlfriend? Chin. There's nothing I can do. Everyone has a girlfriend, but I don't. Cry, Lon. Then, why are you looking for me? With your wealth and influence, you can find random beauty on the street to be your girlfriend. Chin. They are all unreliable, it would be better if I invited you. Lon. I'm going home tonight, so I don't have time to accompany you. You should go find someone else. Chin. Just once. Just accompany me once. Wipe eyes with tears, grieve, cry, jab one's fingers, Lon. You a 20.8.year. Old man, would you die if you don't bring your girlfriend? Chin. Will. Jiang Rulin's mouth twitched. After working hours, she called Jianan and told her that she had something to do that night and would be back a little late. At 6.30 p.m., Jiang Rulin was waiting for Qin Gingxin near the Hong Kong tea shop on Beidou Avenue where they had agreed to meet. She wanted to know what kind of dinner will be arranged in such a small place. And he had to bring a girlfriend. She looked at the time, it was already 6. 10, Qin Gingxin still hadn't arrived yet. She had to call him. Just as she dialed the number, she saw that Qin Gingxin walking towards her from across the street. 
you actually have the nerve to be late. Jian Rulin put down the phone in annoyance. Who would have thought that Beidou Avenue is so crowded? I don't often go to H City, so I don't know much about the roads here. Qin Gingxin shrugged his shoulders indifferently. This time, he did not rush to put his arm on Jiang Rulin's shoulder and instead walked quickly towards the tea house. Jiang Rulin pouted as she looked at his back. Why was this brat dressed so formally today? He wore a finely cut silver gray suit with a white shirt inside. That was a very normal combination but the green tie he chose was a bit strange. In her memory, Qin Gingxin always dressed casually, never this weird. What was going on today? It was grand and strange. Just as she was feeling confused, Qin Gingxin turned to look at her. What are you doing, slowpoke? Ugh, nothing. Jian Rulin forced a smile. Qin Gingxin walked straight to the restaurant and she followed with a quick step. The restaurant was filled with quiet and romantic surroundings and more importantly, that no one was here. Just when she was wondering if she had been tricked, that she saw a beautifully dressed woman sitting in the corner next to the window. That woman looked like she was waiting for someone. Chapter 80 Blind Date You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio Judging from her makeup, she must have been a well. known lady with an impressive family background. Qin Gingxin walked towards that woman. Where were his other friends? Jiang Rulin felt confused, but since they were already here, she had no choice but to follow him. Qin Gingxin had a cool smile on his face. It was so cool that Jiang Rulin wanted to vomit blood. Beautiful girl, sorry for being late. Have you been waiting for a long time? Zi Hanying looked at him in astonishment. When she saw his face, her eyes were filled with amazement. She then glanced at his clothes. Initially, they were all perfect until she saw that I dot catching tie. Zi Hanying's eyebrows secretly knitted together, but the frown disappeared in the blink of an eye. She smiled softly. It's okay. I know that traffic jams are severe around here. What was going on? Jiang Rulin was stupefied. Could it be that this grandson, Qin Gingxin, dragged her into a blind date? Qin Gingxin immediately sat down. At this moment, Zi Hanying saw Jiang Rulin behind him and looked at her in shock. This is Miss Jiang, my personal assistant. I'm sorry, I had to bring her along because we have some work to do. Do you mind? Qin Gingxin said with a beaming smile. Oh, personal assistant. She looked at Jiang Rulin with contempt, as if she was just honey who had to be taken care of by her superiors. Jiang Rulin was about to throw a tantrum when Qin Gingxin suddenly pulled her down, forcing her to sit beside him. Zi Hanying witnessed his intimate actions against her, Jiang Rulin, in shock. Her eyes gradually turned cold, but she still maintained her composure and said, Mr. Qin is very concerned with his personal assistant. I take good care of my subordinates. Qin Gingxin boasted shamelessly before calling for the waiter. Meanwhile, Zi Hanying was looking at Jiang Rulin with a contemptuous and arrogant look, which seemed to be saying, you, a little secretary, want to climb the branch and become a phoenix. At most, you would be a little honey for someone like Qin Gingxin. Eventually, he will throw you away. Jiang Rulin was furious with the cynical look from Zi Hanying but this was not the place for her to make a fuss. She glared fiercely at Qin Gingxin, who was holding the menu and secretly pinched his leg. The man acted as if she was not there. He didn't even bother showing any courtesy by giving the menu to her. He only glanced at Zi Hanying, what do you want to eat? Anything is fine. Then three bowls of ramen. Qin Gingxin said while flipping the menu to the cheapest page. Jian Rulin almost spat out. After waiting for a long time, he only ordered three bowls of ramen. The waiter was also surprised. Qin Gingxin's appearance did not indicate that he was not someone who couldn't afford to come to a place like this. The waiter restrained the contempt in his eyes and politely said, What about the drink? 
Give me three cups of free boiled water. Qin Gingxin hurriedly said before Zi Hainying's face turned green. The waiter wordlessly took the menu, and without another word, he turned around and left. Zi Hainying's face can no longer be described as green anymore. She gritted her teeth silently. I heard that you are the only daughter of the Zi family, Miss Zi. Qin Gingxin smiled naturally. Zi Hainying's ugly expression slowly faded into a light smile. Yes, I heard that Mr. Qin had come to the United States to take over the Qin Company, and now the company has been considered as the trump card of the first and second class of Boston, it is truly admirable. I don't dare to say so. Anyway, I don't have the shares in the company. Qin Gingxin said without hesitation. The smile on Zi Hainying's face immediately disappeared, Stock writes. Not in your hands. The waiter brought drinks to their table. Qin Gingxin took a sip and said without raising his head, That's right, Miss Zi. If you are pleased and compatible with this blind date, let us get married. After we get married, will we stay in your villa or the garden apartment in District X? And your shares in the Zi family, will they be transferred to me too? Zi Hainying took a deep breath and tried to maintain her ladylike like demeanor. Mr. Qin, I think you have misunderstood. Misunderstood what? I think my father didn't know about the Qin family enough. When three small bowls of ramen noodles were served, Zi Hainying could no longer hold it and she immediately frowned. I still have something to do, so I'll be leaving first. As she spoke, she picked up her bag and prepared to leave. Ah, uh, Miss Zi, did you bring any change? Suddenly, Qin Gingxin turned around and glanced at her. Zi Hainying looked at him in shock, what? Change. I didn't bring my money, and these three bowls of noodles seemed very expensive. Look. Zi Hainying's face immediately turned black. She quickly took out the pink note from her bag and stuffed it into the shocked waiter's hands. Then she ran out of the restaurant without looking back. Seeing the woman leave angrily, Jiang Rulin turned her gaze to Qin Gingxin, who was eating noodles, a blind date, huh? Qin Gingxin put down his chopsticks and casually wiped his mouth with a tissue as he glanced back at her with a smile that was not a smile. My parents forced me to get married as soon as possible. While I was in Boston, they tried to introduce young women from the famous clan, and after that traveling back to H City, they still tried to get me to go on a blind date. They have made an appointment with old Z, and wanted me to meet their daughter here today. So you let me act out a play with you. Jian Rulin's eyeballs were about to pop out of their sockets. How is it? This grandfather's acting isn't bad, is it? Qin Gingxin laughed softly and whispered in her ear, the food in this restaurant is not good. If you want to eat anything, we can go to another restaurant. Forget it. I'm not rich and I can't afford to hire you to accompany me. Jiang Rulin's face darkened. Qin Gingxin immediately smiled brightly until his eyes sparkled. I will not charge you and I won't mistreat you. I will be a good partner for you. Stop speaking nonsense. Jiang Rulin stood up speechlessly. If there's nothing else, I'll be leaving first. Don't look for me with matters like this next time. Personal secretary. Who wants to be your personal assistant? Why don't you just say I'm your F asterisk CK buddies? If you are willing, I can let you be my F asterisk CK buddies. Qin Gingxin grinned shamelessly. Shut up. Jiang Rulin pushed him away and glared at him. Qin Gingxin smiled wickedly. Are you jealous? Jealous your head. You clearly said that you would have dinner with your friends and have to bring a girlfriend. You pretended to be sad, so I had to accompany you here. In the end, you put on such a show. Qin Gingxin, I beg you, please don't be like this. Enough. Please don't force me to do something that I don't want to. I am no longer Jian Rulin from the past. Seeing her getting angry, Qin Gingxin only smiled faintly, but his smile was one of helplessness. 
Dot, now I just want to forget all the memories from the last seven years, including yours. Jiang Rulin took a deep breath and turned to leave. I just missed that one time, and you won't even give me a chance. Qin Gingxin's voice was faint behind her. She stopped in her tracks and turned around to look at him. Qin Gingxin looked deeply at the alienation and doubt in her eyes. He shook his head, forget it. I shouldn't have left that month. If I had, you wouldn't have left me. After saying that, he stood up, let's go, I'll send you off. What are you talking about? Jian Rulin looked at his back as he walked out of the restaurant. She immediately followed him. She saw him walk towards the red Ferrari without looking back. She slowed her pace and followed him until she was in his car. Qin Gingxin was looking at her coldly. Jian Rulin swallowed her saliva and asked, Hey, what are you trying to say? You women. He glanced at her and sighed softly, Are you even a woman? Do you really have a brain? Why are you so stupid? You're the one who doesn't have a brain. Qin Gingxin no longer spoke. He remained silent as the car drove along the road. It wasn't until they drove towards the station near Greenville residence, they saw the police cars circling the Carl Moore Bridge from a distance. Suddenly, Jiang Rulin's sharp eyes caught sight of a familiar black Land Rover parked at the end of the bridge. When she saw the familiar license plate number, she hastily called for Qin Gingxin to stop the car.